Hello, everybody, and I think we are live. Um, as you can see, I've got a brand new video camera. I've got a brand new microphone. <coughs> and if I could get uh, just confirmation from someone in the channel that you can hear and see me loud and clear, we'll get started. <coughs> well, I presume you can hear and see me because, um, yeah. Okay, well, no, no, oh, good, great, excellent, superb, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, um, <coughs> the reason I'm doing this video today is because um, I haven't seen you guys for a while. Um, as I told you before, I was a little bit sick uh, the last two weeks, and I think that's a bit of an understatement. I got influenza B, which was really, really nasty, put me in hospital twice, <coughs> um, and I'm only just at the other the tail end of recovering. It was like COVID times 10. Um, and it, uh, it did some really weird stuff to my, my chest and my heart and all this stuff. And it was a bit of a scary time. And uh, obviously, um, my, my blood pressure uh, was through the roof and I had red eyes. Someone said the sound uh, sucks. So let me just work out why that's happening. Can, uh, well, um, we, I, I have a new microphone. Can, oh, sorry, guys. I'm just, it's, it, people are saying the sound's not good. I've got to work out why that's happening. Audio. Um, a lot of room echo. Mm. Okay, well... Uh, so I will have to continue because uh, I haven't got time to change that. So I'll go over things as fast as I can. Um, okay, so when I was um, uh, compiling this list of everything, um, kind of realized um, how much we have going on. Um, and I think ladies, um, people sort of say um, uh, they're not getting enough updates and, and whatnot, but it's simply because every single um, that every single sort of um, cog of the ecosystem has their own team and um, it's absolutely, uh, it's overwhelming in terms of the developer chats and the Slack channels we have. So sometimes we just, we can't keep you updated absolutely everything. So the things we're gonna, if, if I list the things in the ecosystem now of what we have to cover, cover. so we've got Vulcan Forge um, as a general overview, we've got Vulcanverse, we've got Troy, we've got Berserk, we've got Tower Defense, Vulcan Runner, Tartarus, uh, Vulcan's Assassin, Vulcan's Creed, Forgerina, Block Babies, Vulcan's Chess, Hexagonos, Vulcan 11, the new DeFi app, uh, trade, uh, game fantasy app, Vulcan Fight League. You've got Elysium as a blockchain, which includes Elysium Swap, Elysium Launchpad, Elysium Explorer. We've got the revamp to Agora with the marketplace. We've got Metascapes. We've got the partners. We've got the new tokenomics. So I think I just listed about 30 things which are part of Vulcan Forge. I think people forget how enormous Vulcan Forge is. So when you know, you don't see enough updates as you want. Just remember how many things we're working on right here at the same time. So without further ado, um, I'm going to go through the updates I've got, which my lovely team have helped prepare for us, because obviously I can't keep track of everything. Um, so in terms of Vulcan Forge as an ecosystem, you've seen that we've rebranded a little bit. So if you remember that hierarchy we have with Vulcan Forge at the top, um, and then underneath it, we've got Vulcan Studios. Um, uh, Elysium is a blockchain, uh, Metascapes. So they're, they're the sort of the main sort of three elements of Vulcan Forge now. So Vulcan Studios includes all the games. Um, Elysium is obviously a blockchain and Metascapes is an entirely new product, which is so big it needs its own its own vehicle. Um, now we have got, uh, we are re-releasing a white paper and new tokenomics. I think it's no secret that everything was a little bit ski with Ever since the hack, ever since um, ever since we had we got a new lava tokenomic coming, everything is in the original white paper seems to be a little bit defunct now. So the new white paper will be released, which will also include a lot more detail on uh, the tokens, the circulating supply, because I know a lot of the wallets and a lot of the um, uh, what should I say uh, uh, allocations for this, that, and the other don't line up with what was in the original white paper. Um, so I think we're going to do like a, a, our first Q1 financial report coming up where everything is, is a lot is transparent. You can see where everything's going. Um, and the other thing was the white paper involving um, the lava, uh, how it's going to be released. Because of course, we've got the frenzy pass where you have to pay PYR in order to access lava, which 
possibly could be a higher value than it is now without getting financial advice because it's a limited supply and it gets burned and in theory less supply um, usually it leads to higher value so obviously we have to be a lot more strict in that and we're going to be talking we've got a team of um, uh, a couple of the philosophers a couple of the OGs we're going to really sort of use the community feedback to help sort of get some good tokenomics on that so okay without further ado um, let's look at Vulcanverse first so as you know we did well, we got the refactor done so the refactor is, is basically just code um, we've got uh, refactor one refactor two it's going to be a lot of stuff there that you won't be able to see but you'll be able to feel if that makes sense I mean just think of a basic example of code the initial code we had to make the Vulcanverse was like if so and so does this then do this, and it was listed in all this procedural language, you know, procedural code where it's like, you know, the old logo uh, where you just listed one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. But now it's like everything's been branched off. So if you do this, you do this, and a new, just lots of classes, lots of new functions are created. If anyone who programs, I know what I'm talking about. That's just one of the many, many ways we refactor um, the code. But I do believe there was a, a big document shared with the community of all the details of how we're refactoring. So um, so that the phase one went really well. We're happy with that. And now we're going to finish off with phase two. Now, some good news is that we have the new foraging system. Um, I do have a date, but I, I, have told, I promised my staff I won't say any exact dates on this um, AMA um, because I don't want people to sort of come back at me and say on this date it would happen. But we can say it's happening in March. Um, I know the date, but it is happening in March. The new foraging system is really, really fun. Um, it, it involves spying and uh, defense, and um, you know, it, you can use more than one vulcanite or two vulcanites. It's a lot more strategy involved, and uh, obviously, that gives materials a lot, a lot more value for materials. So that in itself is um, is. Uh, is, 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 is going to be a lot of fun. And then we're going to sort of talk, talk about the new gameplay features. So one of our priorities after foraging is to create your own quest system, because I think the more tools we give you guys, the more um, the more fun and versatile the whole world can be. If we just give you like, oh, one quest, two quests, then it's very one dimensional. So create your own quest is something which uh, we're putting as priority. But we will come back to that and what, what the new fun functionality is coming after uh, foraging's out and the new visual systems out. Um, so, uh, let me go to Berserk, as you know, well, as you know, Berserk is launching this month, um, this week, even season three begins this week. So if you haven't played Berserk yet, I suggest you do play that. Um, we have got a couple of, uh, sponsored adverts up over Twitter, try and get some more users in. I do think season three is going to be our best season ever. Um, bugless, um, new cards, lots of interest in it. So if you, you know, I always tell people, if you've got some friends who want to play, bring them in. You know, if, if just one of you brings in a couple of people, we three times our player base and uh, that's how things kind of start to snowball. So Berserk season three is starting this week. Tower Defense, as you know, we just released infinite levels on the iOS um, and the uh, Android. So uh, that's, that's going well and it also has um, guest logins now, and um, we've got some basic tutorials, so that's always improving. Right now, we're working on some data and analytics APIs, um, so we sort of understand wh where people are sort of signing up, why they're not staying around, what's what's the thing we can do to incentivize them staying, um, and also there's a new quadrant map um, under design. Um, so, so, so for each quadrant, there's a new map, so there's going to be like five new maps coming in for Vulcan uh, Tower Defense. Um, Vulcan Runner, um, so some of the things we're working on right now is the control feedback. There's a lot of feedback about the controls to be used. Um, we're using um, social media going to be lo logins going to be implemented. Email ID and menu for the mobile are currently in the works, which was requested by the community. And we're revamping some of the menu screens and some of the buttons. But Vulcan Run is very much in a, in a good state to play. I think once we add lava to that and uh again we just do some marketing campaigns uh for these games then the user count will come up but book run is in good shape um okay tartarus i don't know if we haven't given you a, a, a new release for that for a while um but there is uh, there's one more level we want to finish designing first there's like one last zone and once we get that zone out then we'll give you tartarus to play it was going to be initially part of vulcanverse but we just ended up at, the game itself is so it is good that it's and it's just easier anyway to have it as an independent, you know, slash to earn game. Again, you can launch it from the, the game launcher and play that. So just a few bug fixes um, relating to play fab and some game functionalities. 
And then we've got this final zone to be implemented and that will be released again as a full game. Um, okay, so Vulcan's Creed is the next one, um, otherwise known as Vulcan Assassin. We changed the name to Vulcan's Creed because it was just better in terms of SEO optimization. I really recommend playing that game if you haven't yet, because right now um, XP is being integrated as we speak. If you look at it now, it's in a really, really good shape. And it's actually being picked up organically by some, some gamers. Um, it's being reviewed online by a few uh, random people who don't even know about Vulcan Forge. So the fact that games being picked up organically is a great sign. So I really suggest you get involved in that. Um, so for the end of March, uh, short March, I should say, the yeah, end of March, we'll have um, the whole website finished for it um, and the trailer for it, which looks really good. And we're currently working on the leaderboard um, and easy, medium and hard mode, which are the next milestones for that. But that's just been chugging on in the background. It's in really good shape. Um, I'm pretty sure, maybe it hasn't been released yet, but it hasn't, if it hasn't been released already, this week we're going to be tweeting out the links to play Vulcan Assassin, Vulcan Creed. Um, maybe we'll do a campaign to get some people in, but that's up to David and the marketing team. But yeah, if you haven't played it yet, do have a look at that. Um, Block Babies, Vulcan Chess, Forge Arena, not priorities at the moment. We feel there's enough games um there and a lot of elements the ecosystem that we want to sort of um fine tune before we do that once we do come back to these uh forge arena will be the first game we pick back up again because that was in a good enough shape where it was kind of like stage one was good and i think once we get to stage two it starts to become a little bit more dota arena but you know we've only got a certain amount of uh people working for vulcan forge and i think forge arena you know all these other ones we're going to put to the side until we can um, finish off everything else we have. Okay, Hexa, uh, Hexanagos, um, maybe being named to Hex um, with uh, Night Angel and Day Devil. This is the game they've been working on. Um, so at the moment, the PTR version is giving XP and your MMR is hidden on the latest uh, Vulcan launcher. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read what they wrote here. Uh, oh yes, okay, so game testers have got the unlock code to play Hex and Lagos at the moment. Um, so if you haven't joined their Discord yet to play that, do so. Um, we can tell you that the open public beta is going to be released next week at uh, San Francisco GDC, which is exciting on the 20th of March. Um, and this week, the website, the roadmap, and the reveal of the new units for Hex Agnos will be released. So big week for that. So Vulcan 11, um, as you know, that was our acquisition of DeFi 11. That's a, uh, not fighting fantasy, um, that's a fantasy sports um, app, the DeFi, Decentralized Fantasy Sports app. Um, it's, it's simply a case of rebranding now because the app's already made, everything's ready to go. A PYR integration has been completed. People can buy PYR through Coinbase or Binance from the app. That's, that, that route's been done. And now it's simply just, we're just getting the logo and the name sorted out. Um, so we can re-release the whole app um, with our Vulcan branding. So this is one of those sort of great, great situations where all the hard work's done and all the easy work of making it look pretty is, is being finished off. Um, we're probably going to do it all in one go to sort of release it in a big marketing sort of uh, push for that because I think it's in itself, it's an amazing app that has, you know, potentially millions of millions of users in, in the fantasy sports industry. Um, so as you can see, we've really got to pick and choose which product we're going to be marketing and pushing. We can't just say one day, okay, look, Vulcan 11 just released. Oh, look, there's a new version of Tower Defense. We've got to make sure one of them, each of them is just completely finished. And then we dedicate a week or two to, you know, to, to market that and bring some people in. Um, okay. So Vulcan Fight League, um, as you know, that was a Galactic Fight League um, acquisition. Um, again, we've talked to uh, a very popular website, uh, which already has a game um, included, and we've actually acquired that, which is um, some good news for you. Um, a, bit, a bit of alpha released on this. I'm not going to tell you the name of the website, but it's an already um, existing game where you have your MMA fighters fight each other and have the attributes and, you know, the traits go pit against each other. And uh, the winner... Uh, the winners um, get points, for example. So all we're doing there is just replacing the characters with the NFTs. And you go to these um, MMA fighters we've recruited in order to train your, your character. So you sort of pay a bit of PYR and then you get uh, additional skins, abilities, attributes to your character and you continue fighting. 
So we can confirm that Volcon to we're going to be launching Alpha at Volcon in New York. Uh, three MMA fighters who will be attending is uh, Ryan Hall, uh, Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Johnson, and Brandon McNinja, McShab, um, uh, McCarran, sorry, is going to be there. Um, all, all previous champions of either 1FC or, or UFC. Um, so we, there's going to be a panel with all three of them. All three of them are signed up to the Vulcan Fight League. And of course, they'll be signing autographs and doing photos with VIP guests only. Um, we also have got some other celebrities soon to be announced coming for Volcon. Again, only VIPs will be allowed access to see them and whatnot. I will say on Volcon, um, I think we're close to only about 50 tickets left now. So um, if you haven't got your ticket yet, I would do it before we start releasing some more names who are going to come because I think at least one of these uh, names is going to, you know, finalize the ticket sales because everyone will just want to come and see this person. So if you're on the fence, probably now's a good time to get your ticket. Um, okay, so Elysium, lots of moving parts for Elysium. Um, so this the airdrop scheduled today, um, March 6th. Yes, that's today, yeah. So those who have lava should be getting their lava today. Then we've got all the different parts of it. So we've got Agora. Um, so at the end of this month, you'll see the switch um, in terms of branding and MetaMask um, and using sort of uh, Elysium token. However, the escrow will still be in place until April. That's when it will be completely decentralized because that, that's, the, that's the hardest part of Agora is changing it from, you know, the escrow, you know, for fast bidding to a decentralized way of doing it like OpenSea do it. Um, so that's been the hardest part of the coding. But you'll, you'll see you'll see step change where you'll see obviously the title change, the colors change to Agora. You'll realize you have to use PYR and Elysium. And then the final change will be taking the escrow out and using MetaMask only. Um, Vendy won't be used anymore, and um, I'm sure we'll all be glad that uh, the escrow won't be used either. Um, okay, what else have I got here to talk about? Okay, so the launch pad and the Explorer's up already on um, explorerelysiumtech.com. Uh, you can elysiumchain.tech, you can check that out now. The Explorer's up. Launchpad and the swap are still under development. Um, what I will do, if you have tuned into this, because you're so um, kind to listen to me talk, I'm going to give you an update on Metascapes with visuals. Um, maybe not all of it, maybe some of it. So let me see if I can get this to work. And you can check out um, this trailer. So there, there's, there's here a full cinematic coming to help launch Metascapes. I'm not going to play it all because it will spoil the reveal when we finally do it. Um, but yeah, check this out. This is pretty cool to give you an idea of what we're showing. Share screen, window, this one, share. Okay. <laughs> And that's all I'm going to show you. So it does go on for a while because Metascape is absolutely brilliant. And um, as you can see, it's very much tailor made for all demographics. <laughs> we started putting some new assets in. Um, we're going to release um, a public alpha um, at the end of this month for people to play with, with um, the assets we have. And at Volcon will be the full release um, to start making your plots and building on it.
Um, yeah, so I think I've covered everything. Um, again, you know, if there's any questions you've got about specific elements of Falcon Forge, then just drop a message in. Just ask in Discord. Someone can answer. I mean, I'd rather have questions about, you know, what, when something's going to happen it, with a specific sort of question about when's Vulcan Runner going to have the new UI put in, um, as opposed to sort of, you know, complaints about not enough marketing or the market, the macro market, all that rubbish, which will just solve itself. So, yeah, okay. I hope that's okay. Um, and, and I'll, I'll save five minutes for questions if you have any now. Let me have a look in the channel if there's any questions. If you've got any questions for me, you can ask it in the YouTube uh, chat because I haven't got Discord open. Will we have more games in the studio? Um, to be honest, I think we've got enough. I think I just counted how many games have Vulcan Forge got now? Vulcanverse. Berserk, Tower Defense, Vulcan's Runner, Tartarus, Vulcan Assassin's Creed. Um, and then now if you include the other games, we've got, you know, you've got, we've got Hexagonos coming, Vulcan 11, Vulcan Fight League. Uh, we'll go back to Forge Arena. Um, I'm pretty sure I've missed one or two. Oh, and, and, and Metascape, of course. So we're looking at 12 games already. I think we're good. Um, only half of those games are probably even playable right now. So let's just finish those off. Um, will there be an educational element to it? Yeah, there is. As I said, we've partnered with some schools in, um, well, a district um, in the UK who will be rolling out Metascapes. It's called Metascape Learn, which is a version for um, kids in school to learn about metaverse and blockchain NFT so they can sort of just understand what saving something to the blockchain and storing as NFT is. Um, if that's a success, then that would be great because, you know, if we can get the kids in early on Metascapes, that would be super. How's the US expansion doing? Yeah, it's okay. We didn't open an office over there in the end. Um, uh, instead, we're just using a lot of um, Anthony's connections. Um, in fact, he's been really, really good in terms of who he's set us up with, in terms of people coming to Elysium. Some we've announced, some we can't announce. Um, you'll know probably, you'll know by Volcon who's coming uh, and who isn't. Um, he's helped us a lot with exchanges and um, uh, some other business entities, which again, I probably can't say. I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, it's been more about the connections through Anthony, which has been wonderful. Um, when will other companies start launching their games on Elysium? Okay, so here's some good news. Um, we have, um, I can announce that, well, you know, Vendetta uh, DAO is, a, is launching their entire ecosystem on Elysium, which all burns lava, which is great. Um, there's another company called My Pharmaverse, which was talking about going to Solana or Avalanche or another blockchain. Um, I reached out to them on Twitter, had a, had a meeting with the CEO, and I can confirm that they are putting their entire ecosystem onto Elysium 2. So it's like these biomarkers, DNA biomarkers. They've got all these medical connections. So they're going to put all these D NFT biomarkers on Elysium. Their whole token is going to be on Elysium. Um, the idea is that people can sort of get their DNA um, tested in, in an NFT form, and then you can sell it to pharmaceutical companies if you want, you know, because there's good money in that apparently. So that's good. There's another project coming to Elysium. Other than that, Hustleverse are still around, and they are currently moving their NFTs, all their land NFTs, to Elysium. Um, they just released Alpha, uh, or Beta, I think it was. Um, so they're coming. Edverse is still coming along. We've got a few others we can't announce yet. Um, but yeah, siga uh, siga, we say, slowly, slowly in Greek. Um, when do you expect to have lava on an exchanges? Okay, yeah, we will have lava on an exchanges, and it is primed to go on an exchange. Um, so that's interesting because obviously that puts lava on the map a lot. I remember the best way to get lava is holding PYR or play the game to the Frenzy Pass, which costs PYR. So with anything good with um, lava in terms of price appreciation, I guess it's good for PYR. And um, we have a major, 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 major exchange integrating Elysium because it's audited, it's quite simple really in terms of blockchains there's nothing technically crazy about it um and once elysium is integrated in this exchange i'm sure the other exchanges will follow pretty quickly uh metascape is looking amazing is there any concern it's kind of overshadow vulcanverse not really i mean it's um don't forget every, every, 
you know, Vulcan Runner could overshadow every game. I mean, one of the one of our products is going to be um, bigger than the others. I suspect, out of the blue, um, Vulcan Assassin is probably going to be our most popular game in the next month, just because it's a very simple toilet game on the mobile. Um, it doesn't make a difference, really. Don't, for Vulcanverse can only fit so many people in. Vulcanverse is always going to be our uh, our staple. Our, what's the word I'm looking for? Our flagship. Our flagship, where we can sort of practice everything in before we move it to other sort of games. You know, it, it is going to be an MMO. Um, don't forget, you have quests, fishing, foraging. You have building. You know, you can have NPCs. Um, it, it's a limited game in terms of user count, but you know, whatever. If we get ten thousand people playing Vulcanverse daily, we've done well. Um, so no, it won't overshadow. Metascape isn't a game anyway. It's more sort of creativity on the blockchain, as I said before, the ability to monetize your creativity. But yeah, Metascape is in theory infinite and could have 500 million users because anyone can have a Metascape. But yeah. Um, okay. Uh, duh, 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 duh. No question for now. I just want to appreciate you for being part of this revolution. Pleasure. Thank you, Miguel. Um, it's very, it's been very, very stressful the last six months. I can't lie. I'm not being a victim. I'm just saying, you know, it's been really hard because I know the market's affected a lot of people. And um, in these kind of markets, you know, <laughs> everything you do is wrong. In a bull market, everything you do is right. And we've had a bit of, you know, kickback of uh, communication and transparency. But again, I do not know any project out there that is working on as many things as we are. As many products as we are, we're, we're, every day I'm in the Discord talking to you. We, we release four or five tweets a day, keeping updated. Just, you know, be patient and just, you know, let us build. And uh, even little comments like that, you know. So thanks for being, just a little thank you. It makes a real difference to myself and the team. Um, okay, will Vulcan Runner have other elements like bosses? I don't know. I know there's a whole list of things they're, they're working on. Um, again, I think there's a place you guys just make suggestions, um, but I'll check. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but as far as I know now, let's work on some UI things and the release is coming. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you to all the OGs who are still with us and can see how frigging huge the ecosystem is and how hard we're working to get it all done. I mean, the blockchain in itself is just an enormous project. Metascapes is basically Minecraft with better graphics on blockchain. Vulcanverse is a bloody MMO. And then we've got all these addictive side mobile games. I mean, it, you just have to understand, it's a huge team, a huge ecosystem. And soon it will all come together and everyone will be happy and slapping each other on the butt and saying, well done for being patient and trusting in Vulcan and us. Okay, all right, guys, I'll try and fix the mic a little bit better for next time. I love you all. Um, I'm glad my health's back, so I'll be around a lot more. Abu Dhabi was great. Um, um, I, I cancelled Dubai due to my health again, so I won't be at Agora. But Abu Dhabi was great, some lovely connections through Anthony. Um, and uh, watch this space. And thank you, Josh. I appreciate the kind words. Thank you, Mr. Faceless. And um, thanks, Ralphie. Um, much love to you all. Peace out and forge on and I'll fix my mic for next time. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.